Okay, Rebbe, we'll move into this caller. Caller, welcome to the show. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, Rabbi Tobias Singer and Will. This is Sean from Montana. Hello, Sean from good? Montana. How are you? I'm wonderful. So I'm gonna, I have two questions. I'll make them quick and easy. Um, I know Tobia is not huge on um, translations and versions, as I've listened many times about that, but based on a prior um, recommendation, he recommended Art Scroll and ordering the Tanakh from them because I do not know and I have not learned Hebrew yet. Um, is there a English or a recommended place to get the Talmud, the oral, the oral Torah um, in a English written version is basically my question and the recommendation there. And two, as I've been reading and studying, I just came across something this morning uh, in the book of Daniel, where in chapter three, hang on a second, buddy. Sorry about my son. That's okay. Um, where it talks about, let's see here, Nebuchadnezzar throws um, the three gentlemen into the fire, and he pops up and says in verse 25, he said, look, I see four men <laughs> walking about in the midst of the fire without harm, and the appearance of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, this is NASB. This is my Christian Bible I'm looking at. Okay. In my Tanakh, it says, um, let's see here. So he basically... Says, Behold, I see four. So basically, you want to know who the fourth see, man in the fire was. Well, yeah. In the, in the Tanakh, in, in my art school version, it says, like an angel. Right. So I wanted to kind of get his, an elaboration on Okay. Um, why it was translated differently. Okay. And, what, and who and what exactly the fourth person is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, Sean, thanks for calling in. Were, were you the one that I was messaging uh, about this, uh, about the Talmud? Yeah. On Facebook. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And I've, uh, I've talked. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate all the recommendations. Okay, thanks, man. Okay. Uh, Rabbi, so so just to clarify that too, um, just to kind of give you some uh, some more context as to our previous conversation is, uh, Sean is uh, it was an ex Christian. He's trying to study Torah and learn. And um, of course, my recommendation was what you told me, and many others have told me: don't try to study the Talmud on your own. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm think that uh, halacha is that most of the time is that uh, a Gentile is not supposed to be studying the Talmud. They can study Torah, but not the Talmud, which could be a further question because I I do get questions a lot on um, Talmudic sources and I'm very reluctant to even talk about it because I myself am not Jewish yet and I don't know where I stand and can I actually buy it no, well actually I, I own one uh, I don't study it much unless I actually have an Orthodox friend helping me along to, to tell me exactly what I'm studying and what it really means so uh, as much information on that that you could give out please do if you don't mind it says the Bar Elohim, which this is Aramaic. The word there is Bar instead of Ben. That means like the son Elohim, which means of God, the son of God. What does that mean? In, and this makes people uncomfortable, very nervous. What do you mean the son of God? That's scary. That sounds like it's Christian. It isn't. The angels re being referred to as the son of God is commonplace in the Jewish scriptures. We don't use this language today, but the Tanakh does use this language. And if you're not thoroughly familiar with the language of Tanakh, take Job chapter 1, verse 6. Look it up. Satan approaches God, and he's there with the council of angels who are in the heavenly court to accuse Job, who was a righteous man. His righteousness can be attributed to his good fortune. Well, there we have the same language that we have in that case. By the way, Job is written in Hebrew. It's b'nei Elohim, which means children of God. I want to grant this point. If someone is not reading Tanakh and they read one passage and something is in, the, in a fiery furnace that is uh, called a, a bar Elohim, a son of, a, what is translated as son of God, because bar the, the book of Daniel from chapter 2, from very early chapter 2 until the end of chapter 7, is all written in Aramaic. Of course you're going to be confused, but if you've read the Torah, you've read Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, where Moses tells Pharaoh, Israel is God's firstborn son. The Jewish people. Does that mean the Jews are God? 
That, well, that certainly isn't the case. In the very famous Hosea chapter 11, when Hosea is recalling Jewish history, he says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him, and out of Egypt have I called my son. Now, it's talking about the Jewish people that God brought out of Egypt, delivered out of the prom- delivered to the, out of Egypt and brought them to the promised land. You know very well that Matthew is going to misuse this text because, again, this is vulnerable stuff. If you're not familiar with the genre, the language of Tanakh, which we don't use today, uh, if you're familiar with Tanakh, then you know this. So, Matthew chapter 2, verse 15, he will quote Hosea 11, verse 1, uh, to demonstrate that the reason why Jesus had to go down to Egypt with his family, because Herod is seeking to kill the child, and then Matthew says, this is not an arbitrary event, that the uh, Holy Family had to escape uh, at, uh, the Bethlehem and go down to Egypt. Oh, no. This is foretold in the prophets where it says, Out of Egypt have I called my son. As it turns out, if you go to the text, it says, When Israel was a child, then I loved him. Please look up Hosea 11, verse 1. Um, if you go to Exodus chapter 20 and 21, you'll see in all these cases what they have in common is the following. Those who speak on behalf of God, those who represent God, are called God. Now, we don't talk that way, but Tanakh does all the time. And therefore, for example, I just want to give an example. So you're going, really? So I just want to give an example here. If if Moses says something, and he's speaking prof- prophetically, so one can say, when quoting Moses, that God said. In fact, you didn't hear from God, you heard it from a prophet. If Ezekiel tells the nation, uh, conveys the word of God to the nation, one can say that God says. And in fact, um, Judges are called God. You'll find that in the book of Psalms. You'll find it in Exodus 21, 22, literally, that the judges who sit on the, on, the, on the court, who are teaching, who are expressing, who are conveying the sacred oracles and judgments of God, they're called God. They're called Elohim. They're literally called God. So, therefore, I want to say this to you. The first part is that if you're not acquainted with Tanakh, you're in a lot of trouble. What am I, you know? And I want to also say that these are fair questions, and unlike other points that are made by Christians, this one really can't, this one does require an explanation. Now, the explanation is real easy because you're going, oh, oh, I see that. So when we say the Son of God, we don't know. Now, I want to just get to the last point. So now that we, you understand this, that this is, this is the way angels are called, we see this all over Scripture, and the Christian Bibles will translate these as angels frequently. The question is, why would there be four? Let's get back to the story uh, that we encounter in Daniel chapter 3. I love the book of Daniel. I can't say Daniel's my favorite prophet, but he's kind of is. <laughs> I just, I just very intensely love him, and God uh, considered him um, um, very, very precious. He called him Chamud, uh, which is very, very precious. But the key is, wh- why was this important? Why was it important that there should be an angel there so that there would be four beings walking around the fire? Now, I need to tell you this. I want you to remember it. I don't want you to forget this. Okay? When Tanakh uses the number four, I want you to always think about the four kingdoms that would subjugate the Jewish people, whom God promises that will be, they will be defeated, and the Jewish people will survive, even though they're sitting in the midst of a fire. Whether it's a bush that is sitting in the midst of a fire that Moses encounters in chapter 3 of Exodus, and the bush won't be consumed, that's Israel. Uh, the Jewish people will it will endure, and we see this in the very statue that uh, that Daniel wouldn't bow to. It's in four parts: gold, silver, um, um, uh, uh, bla- uh, brass, and then clay and iron. The feet are made out of clay and iron. So you have the four parts of the statue. Why four? Why are the four creatures that Daniel is going to encounter in chapter seven? The lion the bear, the leopard, and something that's in, indescribable, 
which shocks Daniel. Why is it four, four, four? Why is it the four horses, the four different colors? And that fourth one, which is sort of strange. So the reason why there are four in the, in, in the kiln, in the fire, is a powerful message that's going to go up over and over and over in Daniel, and that is that you, the Jewish people, are going to survive four. Four are going to survive. That means you're going to survive four nations that will try to destroy you. And that is Babylon, followed by Persia, followed by Greece, and followed by what is Edom, which is Rome, which is then uh, sublimates and emerges as the church. The fourth kingdom is something really indescribable because it's not monolithic. Pompeii enters Jerusalem in 66 BCE, but eventually Rome is going to convert to Christianity and Christianity to Rome. And then Christianity is going to split in the great schism of the 11th century, the Reformation, and so on and so forth. So I, I, I don't want to just say, okay, this is why the Son of God is used there, and that's a phrase uh, we find all over Tanakh, and if you're familiar with Tanakh, you go, oh, of course. Uh, the key is why, all right, we got that part, but the question is why? Why was that important? And that is that, why was it, because for the same reason that Abraham, our father of blessed memory, uh, defeated four kingdoms, four kings, when he rescued Lot, his nephew. Why is this important in Genesis 14? Because what Abraham accomplished will be accomplished by his descendants. So it's really mm, ah, delicious. I hope you'll take a lot of time studying this. But again, it's I'm not I'm not doing anything fancy. But Daniel does presuppose. That you know all this already, and that's why when you get a when you get a book of Daniel, if you're just getting a translation, you, you will find this confusing. Uh, it, you you need commentaries that will be able to just pull this out for you. Or you need a good teacher. You have to have a good working knowledge of Tanakh because the the Tanakh is not using the language that we use in the 21st century. It's using a different kind of language. It really is not very different because I could say that when Isaiah spoke to Ahaz in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 10, I can say Isaiah wasn't speaking from his own head. He wasn't speaking from his own his own creativity. He was speaking, and God was using him as a vessel, as an oracle through which to transmit the sacred, timeless message to Ahaz. And that's why, in fact, if you look at Isaiah 7.10, it says, and the Lord God, and it's literally the ineffable name of God, said to Ahaz. But Isaiah was speaking. Isaiah is literally called God. Mamush, not literally the, the 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 name that we don't even that that Orthodox Jews will not even pronounce is right there in Isaiah speaking, God. So it is proper that when a prophet speaks to say that God spoke, because we want to emphasize that these people were not just writing from their head and from their imagination and their from their perspective, but rather this is the word of God. Now, if you study to enough like this, if you pour over these timeless oracles. I assure you, this is going to bring about the true Mashiach, the Meheri Menu, quickly in our time. Thank you for that question. Adon Olach, Asher Malach, V'terem Kol, Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, B'chev Tzokol, Azai Melech, Azai Melech Shemu Nikra Ve'acharei Kiklot Akol Levado Im Loch Noa Ve'u Aya Ve'u Ove Ve'u Ove Ve'u Yeh Betifah 